Who has the best head coach in the NFL? We're going to begin tiering all 32 situations today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dude, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making Locked On NFL Scouting your first listen every day and a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Joe, I don't have a cute gimmick at the top here, but I do have a admission of relief that we decided not to list the coaches one through 32 and are instead presenting them in tears for the people who consume this podcast. Because I think it, it's it's much easier to present a reasonable take and to have people hear a reasonable take when it's not definitively saying that Andy Reid is better than Bill Belichick or vice versa. Yeah, I think it's the right way to do it. It's not because we're trying to like avoid... Yeah. I'm not afraid of getting yelled at on no, Twitter, which doesn't we, work anyway. You sign up to do this work, you get yelled at. That's part of the deal. People don't like you when they don't like your football opinions. But I, I think grouping them together in tiers is just the appropriate way to do it. Um, because like you mentioned, you can do Bill Belichick or Andy Reid, but it's also like uh, Robert Sala and Kevin Savonsky. Like, <laughs> let's, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of nitpicking and splitting hairs and that type of stuff that can go into it. So Let's get him in the right neighborhood and have conversations about what these coaches are. Took a timeout here. Feeling like Mike McDaniel. Take my timeout right here in the first opening possession. Um, you said something there. And over the weekend, one of the things that we did was we cross-checked all the players on yeah. the rosters. And it was really fun because I have handled that spreadsheet last year when we did the, the exercise last year. It was new for you to see the spreadsheet, to see the scoring. And you're looking at how position rooms are stacking and we're asking ourselves questions and we make a change and you see like the difference and you're like, holy cow, the margins here are pretty tight. And just hearing you talk about Kevin Stefanski versus Robert Sala and talking about how nitpicky it is. It was very cool uh, because we acknowledged when we were doing cross checks, like, yeah, that's that's the NFL margins, right? Is is it's it's razor thin in the vast majority of examples. Now, not when Houston plays Kansas City, but I think that's probably a bad example because didn't Houston play Kansas City like irrationally tight last year? Yeah, sometimes that'll happen. But but nevertheless, it was was really cool to have that embodiment of just like how for a league of parity, for having consistently the same six teams in the divisional round it feels like every year to also be able to definitively see the margins on how close it can be between getting to that point and not getting to that point it's very cool i'm pretty sure i saw a statistic uh recently that um no i didn't see this is a fact that in 2022 it was the highest percentage of games settled by one score mm. like ever ever Slim game margins. inches, baby. Yeah, slim margins. Life All right, so football. we have lots of tiers. Uh, how many tiers do we have for coach head coach today? Today we only have four. We only have four today, but if we, the whole project, this will we'll continue this tomorrow. We have five, six, five, seven, six, eight, seven, eight, nine, 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 nine different tiers. Nine. And so we have the four opening tier. Yeah, four five today, tomorrow. five tomorrow. The goats, Kyle. That's what we're calling this tier one. Well, yeah, goats probable hall of fame locks i like that I think these are all definitive hall of fame locks is what the the header 
on the show says is is Hall of, probable Hall of Fame locks. And I don't think there's anybody that's – there's one coach in this bucket that has a smaller sample size than the rest. Um, but it's Andy Reid, Kansas City, multiple Super Bowls, even more Super Bowl appearances with what he did in Philadelphia and them appearing in four consecutive NFC Championship games. It's Mike Tomlin, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Might be on pace to challenge Shula slash Belichick when it's all said and done from an all-time wins perspective. How Never. long does he want to coach, right? That's the question. Right. right. Speaking of how long does he want to coach, Sean McVay is in this bucket. Two Super Bowls in a very short amount of time, appearance-wise, won one of them. Uh, Bill Belichick, of course, is in this bucket for uh, the longevity of just how consistently good that New England team was. Uh, for a varying degree of dynamics. And then Sean Payton coming back out of retirement uh, to coach the Denver Broncos. His resume is robust and impressive. And um, he also, of course, have, has a Lombardi trophy to his, his credit. So that five we felt like was the proper separation to draw a line in the sand and say, your track record, your success, your championship pedigree, all of it matters. You guys are the cream of the crop. Bill Belichick, we could talk all about the Super Bowls. He's got six of them. That's more than anybody else. And you know, obviously the dynasty that was the Patriots. But I think where I gained more appreciation for Bill Belichick, the coach, has been since Brady left. And that Cam Newton team getting them to seven wins, getting that Mac Jones rookie year to the playoffs, that's impressive stuff. Now, I think Bill Belichick right now would be a better head coach if there was a GM in place and he didn't have control over – uh, the roster, but it's hard to, not hard, it's impossible to really argue against the man's resume. And I, I think may, the, the success obviously hasn't been there like it was with Brady, but there's still a lot to be impressed with over the last three seasons without Brady. Yeah. I mean, they've been, they are the quintessential you know, game of inches and, and tight margins and, and low margin for error. Like that's just the ideology that they've adopted and they try not to beat themselves. And uh, I think the Cam Newton season is the perfect example of that. That team was not a good football team. And, you know, kind of the Patriot way from a team building perspective, not to, to go down this rabbit hole again, but we've often talked about on this show, uh, the, the Patriot way, and having a quarterback to Tom Brady's caliber on a discount and frequently targeting veterans on one year, super cheap deals because people wanted to come and play with Tom and be a part of the Patriot way. And like when that goes away, that whole pipeline of like restocking your roster on an annual basis kind of withered up with it. And I think that's what you saw that first season. And then they said, Oh, okay. Like we got to take the bat off the shoulder in March. And they spent more money in the first 36 hours than anybody ever had in free agency. I think before Jacksonville beat it the following year. Mm -hmm. uh, so different ways that they've had to adjust on building a team, but nevertheless, just a persistently competitive football team that um, I'll give them his due flowers for them being competitive the last three years. But Bill Belichick's in this bucket for me, not because of the last three years, but it's because of the 20 something seasons before yeah. that. Yeah. Mike Tomlin uh, rolls out of bed with a winning record and has done so for, for a really Dude, long thought, time. We thought he was dead in the water this year. Right. Even like a couple years ago, you're like, I don't know, man. I don't think Ben can throw a football anymore. Like, no, he's still yeah, won last, football games. That, that, that last Ben season, I think they were, what, 8-8? Eight 8-8-1 eight? Eight, eight or whatever? Got the playoffs. Right. 8-7-1 and one made the playoffs. Whatever it was. Yeah. Um, just that. Tomlin's been in place 15 years now. Long time. And the st that organization is the quintessential argument for stability. Right? Do the math on head coaches they've had since like the Kennedy administration. It's three. I think it's three. It's three. It's Cower, Knoll, and Tomlin. That's it. It's incredible. And him being a continuation of that uh, is super impressive. Super impressive. Obviously, Andy Reid's breakthrough in Kansas City speaks for itself. Um, the the couple of Lombardi trophies we've had over the last few seasons, uh, the Andy Reid Bowl against Philadelphia. I'm glad Andy got that monkey off his back, if you will. Where like the whole conversation with him in Philadelphia was going to win the big one. 
Yeah, I mean, it, like I hate I hate that you had to use the word breakthrough. I, it makes sense, but he was so good in Philly, and like yeah. you, lit- literally, the entire NFL is populated with Andy Reid's assistants coaching, right? Like if you're you're either the the Shanahan tree or the Reid tree, right? Like that's that's what the league is right now. Um, and I mean, he was he was awesome in in Philly. I, I mean, circumstances often got in the way, but I mean, and. Uh, Everything but winning Super Bowls in Philly is what happened. And then he goes to Kansas City, and, and then the next thing you know, you got Patrick Mahomes. So you have, like, the best offensive mind in the football with the best quarterback, the most instinctive playmaker. I don't know, maybe that I've ever seen at the quarterback position. I mean, that's a deadly combination. Anything you want to add? Just First over group. here, just over here, just giving all the flowers to all the thorns in my side over here, and, and Andy Reid and Bill Belichick. For, fitting, for fitting that you chose to help me wear Dolphins colors here on today's show. Yeah, while you also know, doing that. It was very much on purpose. We got to all of them here. Sean McVay, he's awesome. Young, he's won a lot of games in a short amount of time. Um, Super Bowl champion, been to two Super Bowls with two different quarterbacks. And you mentioned Sean Payton, so uh, that is the the goat tier: Reid, Tomlin, McVay, Belichick, and Payton bunch more to get to here today on this conversation but first need to tell you about linkedin these days every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business you want to be 100 certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available and that's why you have to check out linkedin jobs linkedin jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free it's so easy to create a free job post over at linkedin jobs and then once you do that add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that your company is hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you could quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Okay. So we have our, I don't want to say legacy guys, but they're, they're long tenured, highly successful, all championship pedigree coaches. Our next year is the modern top shelf. And uh, there's one coach on here who I think has a pretty strong argument for the GOATS bucket, and that's John Harbaugh with the Baltimore Ravens. Right now we have him in Tier 2. Uh, I certainly think... Can we, can uh, we just correct that right now? Do, like, do we both agree that he deserves to be in that? I don't know. Bal- Baltimore also has had more... John Harbaugh is an outstanding head coach. And I remember when they were doing the one-year extension thing at a time, we were all sitting here saying about 30 teams in the league should be falling all over themselves to mm-hmm. hire John Harbaugh if they were foolish enough to let his contract expire. I think for congruency's sake, it, it's worth putting him into GOATS, but it's also worth acknowledging, I think, that there have been more lows with Baltimore than I think the other teams. Fair. You know, Fair. like Tomlin Fair. never had a losing season. Um, Harbaugh obviously has won championship, but they've lost their last, well, what was it, six and missed the playoffs. And I understand like Lamar was hurt for that too, but well, they, they've, they've been a little bit more herky-jerky than consistently like a staple from a contending standpoint. They've had some average years. Yes. So I think that's the argument, but I'm perfectly fine elevating Harbaugh and saying, hey, you've also won a championship. You've been super long time tenured head coach. Let's go ahead and and put you in that same bucket, but you're maybe halfway in and halfway out. I think that's fair. The rest of the modern top shelf. Doug Peterson, another Super Bowl winning head coach. Speaking of the um, Andy Reid coaching tree and Kyle Shanahan is also in this bucket. Uh, obviously that from a wins and losses perspective, the last few years for San Francisco has been outstanding. You know, they are good for an NFC championship game appearance 75% of the time the last three seasons. And uh, obviously the, the, the way the game played out last year with the quarterback injury is well documented. And the fact that they had the success that they did with three different starting quarterbacks is 
incredible. And that seems to be a staple of a Shanahan season. It feels like is more than one guy's going to get reps at quarterback and to have so much other stuff in place in the scheme. So good. Um, I, I think that those resumes speak for themselves and they're probably uh, a little bit separate from the rest of what is a really good group of coaches we're going to talk about today. Yeah. I mean, Shanahan, it's the, what he's been able to do without the quarterback piece, like really ever figured out speaks for itself. And I think there's some things along the way that he, he probably got in the way of some, some wins that they needed at times in, in high leverage situations. But overall, I mean, the trajectory that he's on, I mean, I think he's probably going to have that breakthrough at some point. Um, and certainly, has been through a lot of adversity as a head coach that should position him extremely well to, you know, break through, if you will. And I, I, I fear for the rest of the league, what it looks like when he does have his quarterback and maybe it is Brock Purdy, but a lot of good there with Kyle Shanahan, 13 and three, six and 10 with an injury to your starting quarterback, 10 and seven and 13 and four, the last four seasons in San Francisco. And how many NFC championship game appearances? Is it three? Uh, three. Yeah. Yeah. And he's 43 years old. Man, I didn't realize he was that young. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Okay. See how long he wants to coach, right? Right. I, I think your worst case scenario is he ends up, I think your worst case scenario is ends up mirroring the Andy Reid. But like, will he ever get run out of town? Well, that's the question, right? If, if, if we plateau and we kind of get stuck and you're, nucleus of your roster gets old and you kind of age a little bit. And if you do get run out of town, I would bet, I, I would bet he's going to win a Super Bowl eventually. It's going to be just, yeah. is it in San Francisco or, or is that pressure of being so close for so long going to catch up to you? Yeah. So we have, that's the, the modern top shelf. We did not give anywhere near enough flowers to Doug Peterson in the segment. I don't think we got to him at all. That's on me. So Correct. Let's, let's go. Let's get to Doug. Pump, pump the brakes. Doug. I said this the other day is probably my favorite head coach in the NFL players, coach, highly successful championship has one of the best schemes and marriages of RPOs and modern passing concepts, the growth you saw from Trevor Lawrence, the growth he facilitated out of Carson Wentz before Carson Wentz became really uncomfortable with Nick Foles' popularity with the team as the backup. What he got out of Nick Foles when it ended up being Nick Foles instead of Carson Wentz. Like, I think he is is just a masterful offensive mind. And the fact that he has a Lombardi, I think, separates him from the group of scheme whizzes and a few other young guns that are a little bit further down on this list in, in other tiers. Um, but if, if I were, if I were picking today to move forward with my franchise, you're being considerate to age, right? Peyton already retired once Belichick, Andy Reed. These guys are older. Talk about McVay and, and flirtation with retirement. Like it's it's Tomlin. He's a top three pick for me. Doug Peterson would be to be my head coach if I started now and had to be in consideration of not just one year but the future. I'd agree with that. I like Dougie P. Um, I think he's a him getting Trevor Lawrence in his next gig after kind of like that year off was just crazy to me. Well played and, and like he and it fell into it. It wasn't Jacksonville's top choice. What? 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 D Doug got hardly any offers in this cycle. What? Yeah, what was that? I, in, I, I have a feeling some of that's probably Doug being very selective. He's like, yeah, I'll take Trevor Lawrence. Right. Good for him. Good for him. Never going to be a problem. Uh, okay, so, well, do you want to get to the Young Guns here or the, the next segment? Um. Let's, let's stuff let's them. Let's, hold let's stuff them in the next segment. Right, we got we got young guns and persistent contenders coming up after a very quick break here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. All 
All right. We have two young guns. Uh, very, very well regarded uh, young head coaches whose teams have made championship runs. They have conference championships to their credit in the last few years. Yep. Uh, you have Nick Sirianni with the Philadelphia Eagles. Obviously, year was it year two for him last year, and they made it to the Super Bowl. And uh, Zach Taylor, who in year three, they made it to the Super Bowl in, in losing to the Los Angeles Rams. So uh, I think two guys that are obviously very young, but also very aggressive. I think that's kind of the hallmark of both of those football teams is, is the aggressiveness that they bring kind of the modern flair to the game. Yeah, I, you know, with Zach, Ta- or excuse me, with um, Nick Sirianni with the Eagles, um, I know he has a very talented football team, but there's two things that I give him a ton of credit for. Uh, number one is just him pulling all the right levers, it seems, in really yeah. high leverage situations, like yeah. the decision making, the added win, the added win probability that he added to his football team was incredible. So he, Credit to him for maximizing a lot of a lot of good talent, um, but also Jalen Hurts, right? Like the development, the ascension, him unlocking his potential like very quickly with Nick Sirianni is is a big deal. Um, and and I think I'm mindful of the talent that he has in Philadelphia, but I'm also mindful of how he's maximized a lot of that. And so um, we'll see. He's he's already experienced a lot of attrition to his coaching staff, right? Very quickly. Um, so, you know, I, I think he's made some good decisions on on who he's replaced them with. Um, but it feels like Nick Sirianni is going to be one of those guys that can really elevate and stay towards the top of like the respect meter when it comes to head coaches. I, I don't see his star fading anytime quickly. And there, w- there was just total blinders to the um, against the grain approach. Like remember Brandon Staley that year, his first year Mm -hmm. came out was super aggressive. Didn't quite have his thumb on like the right calls and the right opportunities. And they left points out on the field and then they missed the playoffs at the end of the year. And then the following year you saw Staley in like the first half of the season, he, you could feel the adjustment for him or not wanting to do that again. Sirianni, it it didn't matter, and it, it helps to be as successful in those game situations as they were, but just there was no consideration to the outside noise about how unconventional it was. And then you have Zach Taylor, who I, I think is, I don't want to say the inverse, but he just he gets out of his talent's way. You talk about Sirianni and the talent that they had. I think Taylor lets his talent do what they do best, and doesn't overcomplicate the game because it's one of those roster constructions that you don't need to overcomplicate it because it, that there's a certain indefensible component with what they do well. Here's here's the Nick Sirianni stat. I'm glad you talked there because I was able to pull this up. This was uh, the top head coach in win probability added over expectation in 2022, and and the factors that went into this are fourth down decisions, two point con- uh, decisions, first half timeouts, second half timeouts, and delay a game. Nick Sirianni, number one, with adding 70.5% win probability wow. over expectation. Number two was 51.6% Sean McDermott. And then you go with that 45, 39, not many people above 30. That's just unbelievable. Yeah. Talk about pulling the right levers. I mean, that's what I mean. That's what yeah. you mean when you talked about that the other day. All right, so... We those are those are your young guns. Young guns. Zach, Zach Taylor and Nick Sirianni. Young, young, modern, young guns. And then we have the group of persistent contenders. And I think this, when you hear these names, it's going to make a lot of sense to you. Sean McDermott, Bills. Pete Carroll, Seahawks. Mike Vrabel, Tennessee Titans. What's different about Pete Carroll is he's obviously won a Super Bowl than the other mm-hmm. two. Um, but I, I, I look at McDermott and Vrabel kind of similarly in that They've had a lot of regular season success and to some extent, postseason extent. Yeah, Yeah, they've been close, close. but, you know, haven't necessarily gotten them over the hump. And I I think Vrabel certainly has the crutch of saying he hasn't had elite quarterback play at any point in his his tenure in Tennessee. Um, But, you know, Sean McDermott certainly has had a lot of talent in, in Buffalo and he's been close, but obviously there's a little bit more for him to prove that he can take a team to the Super Bowl. 
Um, and that's what I think separates him from some of the, well, not some, pretty much all of the, of the coaches that were in the tiers of, above him. Um, so McDermott, Rabel, Carroll here in the persistent contenders bucket. It's a really strong group of coaches. I think that's why it was important for us to, again, reiterate the concept of tiers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really hard to kind of suss out the the order of these guys because the Vrabel is has in my mind, especially out of this group, gotten the most with the least. I think you can make the case that Mike Vrabel's gotten more out of his team with less than any of the coaches we've talked about today. No question. There's no question. And, and that's acknowledging having AJ Brown and Derrick Henry and some good play with Ryan Tannehill, but some also not very good play with Ryan Tannehill. If there's something about Vrabel that bothers me is how much credit in a bad way do we give him for their style? That's where I get nervous with Vrabel. Is this who he is? Is he a, is he a ground and pound bully yes. ball? Well, that's what they are. And that's yes. going to be tough for them. They're going to be good all the time, but will they ever be great? It's the Patriot way, Joe. Well, that concerns me. <laughs> but I think that the reason why it works for Vrabel, and, and Vrabel, Vrabel, obviously a former player of Bill Belichick's, is he certainly has his own staple. And they've also been a pretty aggressive team in the past, if my memory serves me correctly. He's gotten better, but like he was really goofy. His couple first few seasons, he was very goofy with like, in-game decisions and timeouts and all that type of stuff. He's gotten better. So, I don't know. that they're, they're they're a low margin for error football team. I think that's a perfect way to describe it. But I I am most fascinated what it will what that transition is fully going to look like when you don't have Derrick Henry. Yeah, because he is such a cornerstone piece of who you are and what you do. And you don't go looking for the next Derrick Henry. Right. That's a, that's a first class ticket to getting disappointed. Right. Right. Good group of coaches though. Yeah. A lot of success. So you have Reed, Super Bowl, Tomlin, Super Bowl, McVay, Super Bowl, Belichick, Super Bowl, Peyton, Super Bowl, Harbaugh, Super Bowl, Peterson, Super Bowl, Shanahan, conference championship wins, Sirianni conference championship wins, Zach Taylor conference championship win. McDermott, second best win percentage in the league the last four years. Is that correct? Yeah. He's also the only coach in the league that's won a playoff game in each of the last three seasons. Pete Carroll, obviously, Super Bowl win about a decade ago, but you know they have been consistent, persistent contenders over that stretch. And the Titans, up until last season, had six consecutive winning seasons. So a lot of rich, proven track records here in the first half of this. Uh, tomorrow is much less in the way of experienced coaches. Uh, a lot of scheme whizzes. Some coaches we need more from. Uh, some new hires. The devils you know as compared to the devils you don't. <laughs> That's going to be the fun conversation tomorrow is the Couple devils you know. old school football guys. Those are our buckets. That we're going to talk about tomorrow on the Locked on NFL Scouting podcast with Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino. We are locked on NFL Scouting. Appreciate you guys for checking out the show. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. You make a great rest of your day. We'll be back to talk to y'all again tomorrow. Peace.